So I know that this is not necessarily a tutorial on how to make step-by-step -step Jill Gardner, but this is more like a walkthrough on how I did it, but still enjoy. Hey guys, so today I wanted to make a video on how I made uh, Joe Gardner from uh, Soul, and so he doesn't look <laughs> too good right now because um, there's this thing called interpolated hair, and uh, what it is is if you go down here to children, you have this thing called interpolated, and in ten. We're only seeing 10 of the top hair in the viewport, and you'll see 80 in the render, which is a lot, but hair hair is probably one of the hardest things to render. Um, so I'm going to teach you today how I made him. So first off, I basically just started with importing um, an FBX of a body that I found. So this is, uh, I think, a body made in ZBrush by someone. And um, if we go to this mode, you can actually see I sculpted Jill from this guy. They look completely different now. And you're probably thinking, well, wouldn't it just be easier to sculpt your character from scratch, you know, just from a, from a sphere? Um, but I kind of beg to differ because, you know, it's good to start from scratch, you know, just to kind of be genuine and stuff to how you're doing it. But in my opinion, um, this is actually easier in a way because you don't have to go through the process of, um, you know, building from scratch the nose and the lips and the chin and the eye lids or eyelids are probably one of the hardest um ears those are very difficult nose is pretty easy the brow is super easy the cheeks the cheekbones but the lips very difficult so i just kind of like to start off with this and then literally from this i sculpted him because you can actually see if i turn this on um he actually had a body and i sculpted that too um but i didn't really want to keep that um just because i mean you know we can we can just apply uh you know the same material um and you know it'll look it'll look all right but um in my opinion it's just i just kind of like the head so i did sculpt joe from this guy um i deleted the eyes just because they're bad eyes and I honestly like to make my own um, they are flat you know they don't have the the extra um, iris bump or something I don't know what you call it but I know a lot of people like to do that but when you're animating um, sometimes it intersects with stuff and it's not the best so I honestly just like to make them from scratch um, and so for the head, uh, what I did is I basically used this program called Pure Ref. You can see it down here in my panel thing. And I just took a bunch of photos from, you know, right here. And you literally just put them in there. So, you know, I have a, a couple of photos of, you know, Joe right here. Um, and then I just, you know, put them in Pure Ref. And you basically have... It right here so that you don't have to import them you know into your scene so that's good so I use that a lot um I wanted to focus on the, the lips and the eyes and his cheeks because those are kind of the um, big details that he shows and I realized that and so the lips I think are pretty good the eyes, you can actually see, I could have done better in the cheeks, uh, could have been a bit bigger, but, you know, other than that, just use reference photo. I mean, going from this to this uh, wasn't easy, but, I mean, I like to use a base mesh, that's, that's just me, though. Um, then, how I made the glasses is, basically, I just took a cube, and I just extruded, actually took a plane, 
and flipped it on the x-axis and I just uh, extruded and extruded and uh, you know basically if you actually can see here I mean I just basically this this was the plane right here and then I just extruded that way and then I made this whole loop and then I made this back here I know it's intersecting here but you know from from the camera view I mean you can't even you can't even see those parts right there I mean you can see it a little right here but you know not really um and yeah so I basically I mean I just um, use reference photo again and I just extruded and extruded and um, for this part because I didn't want to make this whole entire thing again because if I did make it again it probably wouldn't look as symmetrical um, to it so um, what I basically did is I shift D'd it and then you just flipped it 180 on the z-axis and um, then I just also duplicated this stem and did it to that and I use the auto merge tool right here which I have on you want it off always unless you're connecting something and I just connected them to the seaming points uh, right here so that's how I made the glasses and for this part um, this is literally just a sphere so I'll actually show you how I did that so I just went shift a UV sphere and I went S uh, on the Z axis and then from the top I went S on the Y axis and then just you know scaled it way way down um, to put it on uh, his glasses so um, that's how I did that uh, for the eyes I have made multiple tutorials on how to make eyes and um, and I've made tutorials inside of other tutorials on how to make eyes and so this, um, if we actually uh, do this, you can see him, and um, I just, the texture that I applied to it was just a regular eye texture from textures.com, um, so that's really it, <laughs> um, and um, then the skin, the skin was probably the hardest part, and you can actually see in the rendered view, you know, if we actually go here, um, you can see there is no uh, subsurface scattering uh, whatsoever actually I mean I actually kind of painted it in there um, and so it doesn't look too good just because there isn't subsurface scattering and for you know the dark color that he is I didn't really know how to make it so I'm still kind of learning how to do that but um, for his skin what I basically did was, um, you can actually see here, so this, um, this is basically what, um, that looks like. So, under the eyes, he kind of had a purplish color, um, on the cheeks, it was definitely a lighter color, and the cool thing is that we can actually go into texture paint, and, um, I'm actually just gonna exit that out, and if you can actually see it right here, Let's go to this mode. Um, you can actually take the soften or the smear or uh, maybe even like a, a blur of some kind and honestly just like, you know, go in there and try to make it a bit more seamless. Um, but other than that, um, I just put it on the sides of the nose, which uh, definitely helped a lot. Um, and he had these darker parts in here, which you could probably easily do with an ambient occlusion node and just hook up um, this color into it. But I kind of wanted to do it by hand, you know, just to test um, some of my poly painting skills. And so I uh, painted the lips and then I painted that. Um, and then it looked uh, like that in the end. And then I hooked an overlay node to this attribute node. And these are actually the skin tones. Um, I tried to do it a bit differently, you could say. Um, you can actually see where this blue part is. Um, this is actually what it looks like. So the blue part, if we hook this back up, you can actually see the seaming on that is actually a lot darker than this part. I didn't really like that, but um, it's honestly okay in the end. But... Um, yeah, so this is 
what it looks like and these are just the basic skin tones um, you know an orangish uh, yellow on the top a red in the middle um, going all the way to the back of the head and down the neck and then for the lips um, I basically just made it like a bit of a darker red you know just for the lips and stuff and then down here is the blue because in this part it says that I don't know it's blue or it's lighter because guys shave there or something I, I forgot what it was and um, then as you can see this is actually going to be a bit darker um, if we actually go to the rendered mode it is a bit darker than he actually is in the final product and so I hooked that to an overlay node with these two and then a hue saturation value and that's what that looks like um looks pretty pretty bad but um i changed the value so the value is probably the biggest thing that you want to pay attention to so um what this basically does is it can make the skin lighter um you can also do this with an rgb curve but i actually like to use um, the the hue saturation and value node other than that so um it's on 1.8 right now but if we do it down it's completely dark if we do all the way up it's super light and so you can actually play with these values to um kind of get what you want and then this is the last one i hooked that up to this color set it to mix and that's how i made the skin i'm not at all good at poly painting or anything like that um but in my opinion this kind of turned out good um and so for another thing for the face so right now i have a multi-resolution modifier and what this basically does is it can help you to sculpt details on his face so right now if i set it to four it's going to take a second because it's doing some crazy um you can actually see we have pores on his head we have this crease we have that crease um he just looks a lot more you know real um they don't really have a lot of skin details in, in pixar movies necessarily um but i kind of wanted to add it in there you know for my own little twist and i usually just set it to one because if you have it on zero you have all these weird looking stuff things stretch and it just doesn't look as good and plus on a one subdivision level it it doesn't really do a whole lot um to you know change it and stuff like that so for the hair um i've been doing this process uh for probably the last couple of characters that i've done what i basically do is i just go into the vertex group and i just make a new one i don't go to edit mode because you can go and do edit mode um if we click off and if we hit assign um or oh, i'm sorry select um this is what it looks like here um, and that's okay. I mean, you can do it here, but what I like to do is I actually like to go to texture paint because I can actually control it um, a bit better. And in edit mode, it's actually harder to like figure out the symmetry and stuff. So I just like to do it um, with uh, weight paint, and this just works way better for me. Um, you can do it a lot more raw. I mean, you can you can you know blur it um, even when all the hair is um, you know finished. Um, so that's honestly great for me. And um, the hair materials were a bit different. It's not something that I usually do. So this one, I for the hairs to be different colors. What you can do is, um, I'm actually going to go up here and go to performance or wherever it is, and I'm actually going to um, turn off um, the 
denoising right now so that it'll just be um, normal. So this is what it looks like right now. And um, this material is, I believe it's assigned to the mustache and the eyebrows. Um, so yet again, use reference footage, you know, to get it right. So if we actually, hopefully my computer doesn't crash, if we sent this to, you know, 1.5, um, you can see its color kind of changes. If you set it all the way to this, it definitely changes because it's changing it to the second color on this. And um, then if we change it all the way to 1, we have this uh, kind of darker thing. But you can see that both colors are actually playing in the mix. You can see, you know, darker ones, you can see lighter ones, and um, this kind of actually looks, you know, a bit better. And then you can, of course, play with the scale and stuff. And it's actually the same thing um, with the second material. Uh, for the second material, I use that for the hair, which actually didn't end up looking good. Um, it kind of seemed a bit dark and so the cool thing is you can actually turn that up a little bit and let's go to rendered mode and look at the hair and you can already see it's you know it's lighter you know um let's turn this all the way down now it's super light and then if we turn this all the way over here it's completely black so you know maybe somewhere around there so that has um it's basically what the hair info thing does to the random, set the random to random. And what that does is um, it assigns different hairs these different colors, you know, the black or the dark brown. And so um, that's honestly a really cool thing that I love to use. And um, so, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for this. Um, the render settings where I just kind of changed a couple of things um you can probably set this to you know gpu um in the viewport you can do denoising so that it can make it you know real time um i set the max bounces to about four or three um this saves on a lot of stuff um and for the tiles um you can actually click on an add-on that actually allows for the number of tiles to be a certain thing and so all of that kind of saves on running time but um yeah this is Jill Gardner and I hope that you enjoyed the walkthrough yeah